Welcome back to the morning show here on Arise News. As security, or the lack thereof, continues to dominate Nigeria's national question, following a steady spike in incidences of killings and kidnappings across the country, in the midst of other challenges, how best can young people begin to contribute their own quota to the problem-solving effort? Or are they an integral part of the problem? Bearing in mind the ignoble role played by many young people in the overwhelming cases of thuggery that characterized the 2019 general election, can it be said with any level of confidence that they are sufficiently prepared to maximize the gains of the Not Too Young to Run bill, which was signed into law by President Buhari shortly before the elections? To further explore this topic, we're now being joined by Adeyemi Saka, a social political commentator and a strong believer in the hashtag Not Too Young to Run movement. His vast knowledge of the political history of Nigeria has been the reason behind his articles being featured in both the print and online media. Welcome to the program. Good it's morning. Nice to be here. Good morning. Good morning, morning uh, Adeyemi. Good to have you on the program. But first, you know, let's uh, do an assessment. How much of uh, you know, uh, improvement in the political landscape did you see in the last general election? The fact that they're not too young to run, they uh, try to allow uh, a lot of young people to get into the race. Well, it's... Um, Both in terms of the process and the outcome. Yeah, I, I get it. Uh, it's, um, it's fair. It's better than where we're, where we're coming from. There's an improvement. But it's not across board. I, I, would, um, I don't want to sound controversial, but I think the region that protests for me is the northern Nigeria. You could pick states like Zamfara State, um, the young deputy governor, young members of House of Assemblies across Northern State. The only shining lights you have in Southern Nigeria is probably from your state, the speaker. And it's just the one off thing I can say, just an happenstance that we could say, we could consider a lucky one. Um, I think um, we tried, we feared, but the, the young Nigerians have to understand the game of politics and understand leadership. I remember the last interview, um, another statement, who I finally called my principal, he said he's looking for, well, the day he sees a young man that has the quality of about, little about Femi Aolowo, little Sadana, and little Zikwe, a bit of Ojukwe that he knows he can find the young man is ready to be a Nigerian president. Um, we saw some of them taking a shot at the stories of the land. I told friends, I said, yes, they'll make good presidents, but they'll never make a good commander-in-chief. How do you mean? Yeah, um, simple. They cannot command the military. They don't ah, understand it. It's, the president it's, of Nigeria has constitutional power. I know, I as know. As head of government. I know, I know. But, but you have to understand, state. you have to understand military politics. You have to understand the workings of the military. You have to understand the psychology of the military without necessarily being a military personnel. And that will make you assert yourself on what the military calls C-square, command and control structure of the military. And with that, you have your troops behind you. 110 loyalty, you can command. Well, it could be argued that those who have military experience and all of this understanding that you cited aren't doing the best job of utilizing the military, yeah. especially <laughs> when we look at the fight against insurgency. But what I want right. to ask you is that the not, not Too Young to Run movement, a lot of people feel that it was hampered a lot by the way that we conduct our political system here. Yes, the youth actually had the chance to throw their hats in the ring, but the system is skewed against them because they lack the financial muscle that's necessary. So I want you to discuss that. And also, if the youths, like you said, I agree with your assessment, especially in the North, that the strides were made, but that's at the electoral level. If strides for the youth could not be made across the country, we're now sort of hopeful that political appointments would compensate for that. And we saw the ministerial list, and it was really quite shocking that not, not even one ministerial nominee was in their 30s. What's your comment on that? Well, um, I probably want to, I might sound partisan, I'll be accused of being partisan. I guess the, the young Nigerians had a fair deal with the PDP while they were in power. Frank Iweke Jr. was appointed a minister at the age of 38. Um, governor Adele she became governor at the age of 43. Uh, you could mention names and they did quite well. Um, you see, it's, politics is expensive in Nigeria. You have to have your structure across the sun and for local governments. It's, um, it's not something you can get from playing lottery or something or bazaar. You have to have a structure. And I tell people, you don't correct the system from outside the system. You, I, I believe if you want to take a shot at these top offices across the land, you have to, have, you have to be on a platform that is that serious about being there. 
It's not just about I create a party because I, um, constitution up, up, you know, gives me the right to set up or establish a political party. You have to be in a political party that really has an agenda and intention to really rule, not just to contest. So I, they have to find their way into such system. Uh, it's just it's disheartening that the two parties that could give um, Nigerians, um, young Nigerians, such um, opportunities are uh, not really serious about it. I, I might, like I said, I still want to say PDP is fair. Uh, because um, the national youth leader of PDP in 2015 was around 32, 33, who is now the national financial secretary. is is going to be 37 this year, Abdullah Mebasira. So, and you look at it, but moving forward, I I think there's a way these um, the, the coalition of the young aspirants or parties could come together, pull resources together, and have structures across the states. Because if it's not just about there in Abuja, you have a national security in Abuja. On election day, you have to have somebody that will be at a polling vote in Imeuwe in Nijebuland. You have to have a, a, an agent that has to be in Nise Luku. You have, to have, you have to have somebody that has to be in Bida, somebody that has to be in Faskari or Funtua. Across the, you know, so that is when you know you are protecting your mandates, you are protecting your interest, and that's how you can be sure of getting there. I'm a bit concerned, though, because aside from the last age that you mentioned of 32 to 33 with the PDP national youth leader, which I don't think there's much to commend there because it's a national youth leader anyway, the other two ages you mentioned was 38 and 43, as to say, hey, the PDP is putting young people in, but that is also still not really young. And like Tundun said, it seems as though there's so many, there's so many issues around the not too young to run bill that really and truly continue to deliberately disempower young people. Take the nomination fees that Tundun mentioned. When I was speaking to Chioma Aguebo, who was one of the people that pioneered this bill, she said 10 years ago, when we tried to get this bill signed into law, it had a clause that took away nomination fees for parties. Now, of course, nomination fees are not going to be taken away because if they are, young people will have access to run. So can we really say that there is any platform out there right now that makes it conducive and able for young people to participate in politics? Because all of this seems really idealistic, and I don't think the Not Too Young's Run bill does anything for young people whatsoever. Yeah, I agree with you. And um, I think another thing that would have resolved that is independent candidacy, and I think the Hits Assembly tried something with it. I, if as an independent candidate, I believe I'm popular to become a governor, my ambition is to become a governor of my state, and I can deploy my lean resources to get there. Rather than paying 20, 30 million nomination fee, I can deploy that to make um, souvenirs, brand, you know, um, branded materials for my campaign, and do a lot of PL. I think it would be better for us. I think that's the way around that we can circumvent the old thing. For but that still keeps you out of the policy. That means you're just playing the little games. It doesn't give no, you the because, big ball. No, the, by, by the time you do that, you now get into the thick of things. Because if, if independent candidacy could have, could have of avail, 30, 40 Nigerians into the Senate. And then you're leered to one of the two main political parties no, 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 where no, you just no, become... No, 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 hold on. And like 50, 60 members are the House of Representatives. And you guys tell yourself, okay, fine, we want more of us to come in here. You can now tinker the laws to work in their favor. So I think that we could just make use of what we have. If we can just press on and make sure the independent candidacy is real, is solid, and is realistic. I think that's a way for us to get in there. Then when we get in there, we can start changing the system. I cannot rearrange this place if I'm not in this living area. It's only when I'm in here that I can say, okay, no, this table is not good here. Let's move it to this side. So let us find ourselves in the system. We can't change it from outside. We have to get in there. Well, I mean, uh... Your point about independent candidacy is valid. It's one of the things that people are conversing. And a young man like Bobby Wine in Uganda became a member of parliament. Uh, he ran as an independent candidate against the two major political parties in the country. So there, there is some value there, not just for young people, but for other persons who are shut out uh, by the political process that we have in Nigeria. But let me ask you, I mean, the basis for that not too young to run bill is to have more inclusiveness process and also to involve a, a critical segment of the population in the uh, electoral process, in the political process. But during the last election, I was involved. I noticed that uh, young people played, uh, you know, uh, a much stronger role as thugs, as able-bodied men. As influencers. Now, what should we have? <laughs> oh, as influencers, okay, if you want to stretch it, you know, yeah. on social, social media. media. <laughs> now, what, what can we do? you know, to address this problem of the deployment of young people 
either as talks on social media or on the streets? Uh, uh, I, I think we'll be asking for too much, but I know my Bible tells me in Luke 1, 37, that nothing shall be impossible with God. Well, uh, when Nigerians <laughs> don't want to solve a problem, they, but, they push it to God. I know, but... but in <laughs> practical terms. But what have you seen and what do you suggest? I, I think it's an, I think, uh, we have to do more with the National Education Agency and what uh, the Minister of Information has to do more. Advocacy has to, there's, there has to be more advocacy to tell the youth that they are just better off than influencers, social media influencers or talks. They can even be the political actors. I, I joined, if I can use the word, politics and since, in, since 2003. And I said to myself, I will never be any talk to anybody. I'll never be any influencer to anybody, and my loyalty can never be bought. I decided what I was pledging my loyalty with, and it's 100%, and I have not changed. And I, if every guy out there believes it's good enough to be the governor, it's good enough to be a senator, it's good enough to be anything, I think that's the right step in the right direction. I, National Retention Agency, as far as I'm concerned, I think after, I'm not trying to give him accolades or praises, but I think after Frank O'Mary left, I think the agency has just went um, on break. I hope they resume because there are a lot of things they need to do. And by time you can try to try to start telling the young Nigerians that you can do something, we need you to come with your expertise. We need to come with your knowledge. We need to come with your own perception or perspectives, vision, and dreams to push Nigerian forward. We will get there. I am not trying to sound they mean, um, insulting or probably derogatory to any member of cabinet, proposed cabinet. But I want to see, I'm yet to see any body in that proposed cabinet that has an understanding of artificial intelligence, robotics, that probably we need in the 21st century. So we need young people to, we need to tell young people that you people need to come on board, not as influencers, not, to, not saying, not that you believe in one uh, central command that sends you scripted messages and you keep burning the social media. You need to be part of this thing. I whip for Nigeria. I cry for Nigeria because if we don't get it right or we don't start getting it right with the young population, we are drifting towards precipice and probably just fall over. And if you are not careful, 20, 30 years from now, other countries will just come to Nigeria as um, they want to go to a museum of how people lived in the 60s and 70s, because that's what we're going to be about. Well, yeah, I mean, we'll go on a short <laughs> break and then we'll come back right. to you. And we can continue with these reflections. Stay tuned. Stay with us in the studio is Adi Emisaka, a political affairs uh, analyst. Now, uh, yeah, I mean, before we went on break, you were saying that you weep for Nigeria because it looks like young people have become part of the problem. But is the problem self-inflicted or due to ignorance? Or these young people that you refer to, are they victims of distortions within the system? I, I think it's a, it's a blend of everything. It's a blend of everything. We cannot... Um, I, things have changed. Parenting has changed, um, national values has changed, societal values have changed, and uh, we've lost it. Uh, we, but not so bad, it's not that bad that we cannot retrace our steps and get it back or redeem things. We can, and that's why it starts from the home and the government. I, I, once your parents believes in you, because um, once your parents believes in you, once the government gives you a sense of belonging, that yes, that your nation is worth dying for. It's worth um, serving and you know giving your best. Nigeria will move forward. Then the, the young ones can have hope. Because uh, Nigerians, uh, there was a time I said on my Facebook, I said, Nigeria is a nation good at killing talents. You probably want to do things in Nigeria will not work. The moment you step out of this country, the next thing we start seeing your name in Forbes or probably any other international uh, media outlets rating you anywhere. What you find difficult to do in Nigeria, you get outside the country, you do it with so much ease. I remember when I got to the university, my first year in the university, I was studying mathematical sciences. I had to, I have, I had, I registered, is it 28 courses for my 100 level mathematical science? I had a lot of agricultural course, agri courses and what have you. And I picked a prospectus of um, University of Bolton University in the UK. Elective, um, for his course is going to spend three years in the university against me spending four. Total number of courses with electives in the three year course and line of duration in school is like 28 courses. So now the system burdens you with so much irrelevant things that you cannot even function. We need to think, we need to rethink and rejig our system, education system, health system, transportation system, everything. As in Nigeria, it's system overhaul. 
to make it more youth friendly because yes. we have such a huge youth population in this country. We're a young population. So I want to get a bit personal with you and talk about your personal journey mm -hmm. because we've established that the Not Too Young to Run Bill Act did not do the magic in terms of youth participation. Our youth is still being marginalized. They're completely unrepresented at cabinet level, the highest levels of decision making. So how can youths who are interested in making an impact, making a difference, how do they go about it? Let's talk a bit about you and how you've carved out this route so that people who are wondering and feeling like they have no options, feeling somewhat powerless, might get some ideas from that. One, the first thing is, um, well, I'm not trying to sound religious. You can, no man can achieve anything without God. And secondly, you set out on your, your journey you, do, you, you draw the map, you chart the like course. someday you may set up a church. <laughs> uh, no, 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 no. I don't see my, I see myself with a P, uh, maybe a president, but not a pastor. And, uh, <laughs> What's I, I, wrong with that? That's a very lucrative choice secretary. in Nigeria. <laughs> no, no, you know, uh, I know myself. I probably will function well as a president, but not as a pastor. <laughs> then um, I, I now, uh, then uh, it was in 2003, I got tired of the way things were working and, I've always been a fan of one man, and I just, okay. I started studying him from afar, then I got closer to him, and I made him my principal, my mentor, and I studied the style of, style of leadership, and okay. And I said to myself, if I go the way it went about is, someday with God, I probably will get there. And that, that formed my decision. I've never seen myself... I, you can't buy my loyalty. There's nothing you cannot find me as a social media influencer to, to sell your candidacy unless I believe in you. Once you have that self worth and you know, that confidence in yourself, I think once an average Nigerian young man, young woman, have such spirit in name or herself, then the politicians, the political class of the class will become jittery because now they know you're ambitious. I met a, 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 one of the leaders of the ruling party. We were talking and he was like, okay, I was being Joe, the party said, can come and join their party? And I said, no, so I'm very ambitious. I can't queue. I can't join the queue. You can't tell me to suppress my ambition because the party says, or the leader says, or national leader says. And the guy said, okay, I know you belong to the PDP. I said, yes, I do. PD, because I said that would give me the opportunity to like express my ambition. The worst that will happen is I will lose, but I will not be told to stand down or step down for anybody. So if we have such confidence in ourselves as young people, we probably will not get there in 2023. But by 2027, God willing, or 20, if God willing, there's still Nigeria, and there's still this entity and structure and political structure to stay experiment and play with, we'll get there. I don't really think that we can put a timeline on it, though, if we don't have serious changes at the grassroots level when it comes to education to begin with because I think that we're focusing on the wrong issues when it comes to what the problem is with the youth of Nigeria today. We seem to put so much focus on social media, but in every society, social media has its pros and its cons. In every society, you have people coming on social media saying the greatest things and the worst things. And Nigeria is just another case study for that. We're nothing special here. But what we see is a situation whereby young people are not given any means through school. We can start with that, not a proper education. A lot of young people are coming out unemployable. So even if young people are coming out ambitious, they do not cut or take, or they do not have what it takes to hold certain positions based on everything that they've had or the lack that they've had when they've been raised. So how do we now change that from the grassroots when it comes to issues like education that we should be championing for at this point? Because I think those are the real issues that are making it hard for young people to actually have some sort of grounding and stance in the polity. I, I, I agree with you, but that's why I said the National Education Agency, because the, the, the education we need there is more of the informal one. Mindset. Yeah, the mindset, where you need to talk to the person in the village to make her understand that it's not the 5,000 hours they bring to you in every four-year cycle that's good enough for you. Your vote is your power. I believe if NOA starts, that will get somewhere. The formal education, like you said, most of the graduates we're churning out are not employable in this century. Uh, we, need to, we need to do more for the Nigerian, the, that demography of the young Nigerians, we need to do more for that class. We need to give them a lot. They deserve more than what we're offering them. We need to do more, and I accept. But you see, you cannot, once you're not in the, in the, in the clique or the class of the policy makers or decision makers, you cannot effect that change. It's just, it's just like, but it's a natural thing. We believe that once you put the water on the head, it trickles down. 
Once it gets into that organ where the decision has been taken, you cannot effect these changes. You cannot say this is what I want to be in the curriculum in schools. You could not. You could give the NOA the mandate. This is what I want you to do. You cannot have play with your infographics to do an analysis of your, pro, your situation reports, how far you've gone, and where you are, and where you intend to be. It's just. It's and the truth of the matter is, and it, it's so sad, and it's the bitter truth that these people right here, right now, are not interested, and they will do nothing about it. Well, let me. Which takes me to my next question. Uno asked you about your own personal journey. Yeah. Uh, you referred to a certain politician that you admired, that you, although you didn't mention his name. Uh, mm -hmm. But when I heard you, I, I said, well, you are trying to touch on something very important in the uh, nurturing of young people in the uh, you know, youth development process, which is mentoring. mentoring. Yeah. Now, in many parts of the world, particularly the United States, we hear that Oh, uh, when Clinton was uh, a young person, he worked with Susu Su Senator. Uh, when Obama was young, he was, a, with he was an assistant in uh, Congress. Or well, J.F. Kennedy once went to Parliament and he had the dream that he too would such stories. Now, do you see here in Nigeria some kind of readiness on the part of the political leadership or even beyond uh, to mentor and help to nurture young people? to have a viable leadership creation process in Nigeria. Or what you see is a situation whereby a man gets to the top, and when he looks around, the only people he will give opportunities to will be his in-laws or his own children or the children of his friends. What have you seen? What, what, what has been your experience? It's, uh, it's, I'll be very factual with you. I think the best sets of people that, that, that have done so well when it comes to mentoring are ex-generals and ex-servicemen. I say this with my personal conviction, but with utmost sense of conviction. The person I did mention his name, I'll probably mention as Jinnah Babangida. And uh, he, he, gives, he, may, he gives you the opportunity to express yourself. And that is it. I've never seen, I've yet to see a politician since 1999 till date that has done that. Um, what they do is they have, they give, they just give opportunity for few loyalists, to make that, to just have to, you know, to encourage their hold onto power. It's not because they want to give the room for you to express yourself politically. It's still because I want to build a political dynasty, it's an expansion of it. And that's what, that's what political class have been offering the young Nigerians from 1999 till date. The three instances are exceptions. You could probably pick an Okowa in Delta State that was a local government chairman to a commissioner, SA commissioner, now a governor. We could pick instances that are, but most times it is a reward of loyalty, not because, not a reward of what you want to offer or how good you are or how good you were in your la or your last job. It's more like, okay, if this person is, by the time I want to go higher or go forward, there will be more resources from him to the central post. That's what, that's what you've been having since 1999. It's not because they want to mentor you to take over from them because I believe you share the vision. There's no master plan anywhere. There's no vision, 20 something anywhere from 1999 to date with this set of politicians. It's just for them to have loyalists that will be there to pour more funds into their campaign funds that they want to go higher. And all of them wants to go higher. And that's it. Let's also address the cultural issue with the way the youth is perceived in a culture like this. Children are seen and not heard. And it doesn't get a lot better for you when you're even not a child. When you're a teenager, a young person, you're just perceived as somebody to just be in the background. How do we start to address this? And also, what the youth hear about themselves. There was a post that went viral about pretty much saying that all the young people in Nigeria care about is Big Brother. They don't care to come out mm -hmm. for elections and what have you. But the facts don't quite support that. Look at the people yeah. that were arrested with this um, hashtag revolution now. Yeah. The vast majority are young, young people. people. They came out knowing what they were going to meet. So how do we address that in a few seconds? Because we're running out of time. Yeah. So I, I think, it. just like I said, we need to change this, uh, the, the national values. As it goes down to NOE. The young man is not, he might be young, but has a lot to offer. There's a saying about that. It's just the, the wisdom of the young and the old that were created the leafy. And that's it. The wisdom of the yeah, tribe. The tribe. Yeah, but but, right. but, but, but the trans, the, the translation. But the bag bag more love that life. So the the whole yeah, is wise. The young is wise. That's what created. Thank, thank you very much. much. You're welcome. Thank you. Nice to be here. Thank you very much.